the thing about the history is that it's important you take your values forward that are important to you forward, but that you don't make the same mistakes twice. There's a number of significant places that we now have opportunity to recognise. Uh, for many of our people here living in Christchurch would be totally unaware of the history pre-European times and now we have opportunity to ensure that that's revealed. Yeah. There have been three phases in, in this city, uh, three historical phases. There's the, um, the pre-contact Ngaitahu period. I mean this place was teeming with Ngaitahu people. Um, a lot of travel uh, from the peninsula to other parts of Te Waipaunamu and stopping off at Market Square. Um, so that was all pre-contact. Pre so that, for me that, that is the first phase of the city. Second phase of the city is when the, colo um, the colonial government arrived and the new settlers arrived and created Christchurch. So in a way they, they tried to replicate, and in a way you can understand it, they tried to replicate England. They were trying to create a home away from home. Um, and they were trying to surround themselves with the things that made them feel at home. Now, you even look around here, the trees that were planted, uh, the way that the city's been designed, um, a lot of it is reminiscent of England. And in a way, that, that was really the post-contact phase of the development of this city. Um, we now have a, a wonderful challenge and an opportunity now arising out of this earthquake. So for me, we're about to enter the third phase of the development of Christchurch. And it is about returning Ngaitahu to the city. It's about returning Ngaitahu history, the things that are valued by Ngaitahu, the place names, um, the sites that are really important to us, and re relocating them here. And, um, and I suppose in a way making them visible, because previously they were invisible. So for me that's the kind of third phase of the city, and that's why I think it's really exciting um, as we progress into what, I, what I'm terming a post-colonial city. And that is a new Christchurch, post-colonial, global city that acknowledges all of its communities, Ngaitahu, uh, the early settlers and their families, and in fact new immigrants. That's the city that we've got to create. It's important to celebrate Māori, the Ngaitahu culture in Christchurch. And it should be that we celebrate the English settlers because they settled the country and contributed to the establishment of the nation state. And Christchurch and Canterbury is important to that. And Ngaitahu is obviously important because those, that, that's your foundation basis for a partnership in the future. But <clears throat> equally, there's lots of other cultures that we need to celebrate in the city. Pre-quake, you, know, you, you needed um, x-ray goggles to see the Ngaitahu culture, like it wasn't visible. And um, I think now it's, it's a really good chance for us to sort of have more of a, a presence, a visible presence in the city. If you, if you, if you walk through the city, um, even over the last hundred years or so, you would not know that you were actually into Waipaunami. Uh, you could be anywhere in England, and I, so I think um, I think that's the real challenge for the rebuild: is to locate this city and this land um, to acknowledge all the peoples and communities that value this place. This river is our heart. This river for everybody, including Māori. I mean, I look around and you see the the um, harakiki or the flax, and you think about your weavers that did the most beautiful weaving. You, you see all the tuna, all the fish that was here. This is a place of gathering, meeting, eating, and keeping your whānau together th through those kind of activities. Out of a kind of a tragedy has to come the opportunity. Um, and as I say, I think we're on the verge of um, setting an example, not only for the rest of this country, as to how to better incorporate Māori into their cities and to incorporate local Māori histories, local tribal histories into the way they perceive their cities. But I think it's a model for the whole world. 19th century we were colonised. The British, European empires colonised the world, indigenous peoples. 20th century, <clears throat> I think they're starting to understand this, is that the rest of the world decolonised. 
Now, the 21st century is going to be about peoples, First Nation peoples, indigenising um, Western institutions to represent their own identities. And it's going to be more than just putting a carving over the hospital entryway. It'll be um, about incorporating New Zealand values which are really about equity and fairness, aren't they? With Māori values of their relationship to the land and caring for people. So th that's where the challenge is going to be, balancing that up against economic financial needs and the, the need to make a profit within the capitalist system. I think um, the key thing would be, I suppose, working together. Like, um, everyone's been forced to behave and to think different. Um, nothing's as it was. Uh, yeah, everyone, it's like the new normal. Everything has to be done differently. And so I suppose in that way, it's redefined the role that iwi can play uh, in our local community and taking a really strong leadership role because, I mean, at the end of the day, Ngaitahu's not going anywhere. And the same goes for our Māori community. So I think it's really a chance for everyone to step up and I think as a community to wrap around supports around developing our own people to play a big role in the rebuild. It's, it's been absolutely essential to include Ngaitahu in the, in the strategic visioning of what the city is going to be. Um, but it's not just enough to have a vision or a story, and what we say in Māori is a moimoya, a dream. You've actually got to anchor that dream to something real. Um, so I'm not just interested in the dreaming. Um, as a planner and as a Ngaitahu planner, I'm really keen to ensure that, that vision and that dream becomes a reality. I'm oh, very positive. This is a place that many of us love and care about. The words kia kaha, although it means strong, it means courageous, and it was said a lot at the time during our, our most significant time, our, that dreadful event that happened to all of us here, there's a saying called ake ake kia kaha, and that's to carry on, that's to go on forever and ever, to fight, to be strong. That comes from the song from the Māori Battalion, and at the end they say ake ake kia kaha e, which means we will go on forever. And this is, those words are very significant now here for Christchurch.